most important thing is that we don't have any fragmentation like in China where you have so many app stores. We just have a dominant Google Play marketplace. And um, as you can see, from one, one and a half billion downloads in 2012, we already reached nine billion downloads in 2015. And it's, it's just really growing. Gaming is the most popular category among paid apps. But you know, there's just a lot of people who are downloading uh, free games. And uh, monetization is a challenge. We'll talk a little more about that in the, in the successive slides. So games is really taking off because of smartphones. We've got an overall gaming market right now of about 450 million, thereabouts. Uh, we will be releasing a report along with NewZoo at the uh, NASCOM gaming conference later this year, but we will have more information then. But if really, if you see, it's about half of that 450 million is mobile gaming, including uh, monetization by microtransaction, paid, and uh, ad, ad, ad uh, revenues. This is kind of the profile of the, the gamer. As you can see, we have a decent chunk of women who are playing. Popular games include Candy Crush, Angry Birds. Popular genres include racing, action adventure, and shooters. So I'll spend like 30 seconds on this slide because this is the most important one. I think this market in India can really go to a half a billion within the next 18 months, if not earlier, if we just manage to crack payment. Payment currently happens to be the biggest challenge for, for the games industry in India because we do not have too much of credit and debit cards, and more importantly, people are reluctant to use their debit and credit cards in uh, games or in the app stores. So carrier billing integration would probably make a very, very big difference to, uh, to the Indian gaming market from a monetization perspective, just as it has made in China. I mean, China took off just after that happened, and it's going to be the same story in India. And um, it's a cash market. 95% of the Indian mobile subscriber base is prepaid, which means people do not have postpaid accounts like you guys are used to. It's mostly prepaid. Uh, carrier shares, revenue shares have been awful, but I think we're going to see some solutions to that because we have the big players like Google and Microsoft talking to them. So uh, the game changes as we see it really is Google Play with carrier billing, reduction of in-app purchase, threshold from a dollar to about 20 cents has already happened. That's already kicking in in a big way. And I think the other thing that you need to know is that right now, India is having a massive push on e-commerce. So we have the Amazons and the local players like Amazon who are really encouraging Indians to use their, their uh, you know, plastic money, their mobile wallets, their bank accounts online. And once that habit kind of starts kicking in, then people will be more comfortable using uh, you know, those, those uh, very same payment channels for, for entertainment, which is, which, is, which is something that they're not doing currently, you know, at the levels we'd like them to do. So the other thing that you need to know is that Indians love Indian content. We, uh, we are an interesting lot. We can speak English. We love Western, uh, you know, content as well. We, we wear Western clothes, but when we go home, we like to watch Indian, Indian content. TV is dominated by Indian content. Movies are dominated by Indian content. Music is dominated by Indian content. So we don't see a reason why games are going to be any different. However, uh, when I say Indian, it doesn't mean that you straight away have to jump to doing mythology content or anything. It's just about the social context, the local context. And I think uh, there, there definitely would be a benefit by doing some localizations in some, in some of the major languages, like Hindi and Tamil and uh, Telugu. But, uh, but I think um, it's, it's just about lending that, that context, which will really help. The other, the other thing to note is games. The use of games in education is taking off in a big way. India is spending a lot of money on skill development and using technology uh, to, uh, to kind of really change the quality of education in the country. And I think uh, some of you guys here are into serious gaming and gamification. I think there is def definitely a big market uh, you know, for, for your expertise in India. The developer ecosystem, very quickly, uh, where we are. We've really had a hockey stick growth in the number of developers in India, you know, starting with my company, and we stayed alone for a while. But then, as you can see from 2010 onwards, it's really taken off. We have close to 200 companies now. They're spread all over the place, but Bangalore and Mumbai and Pune, these are really the big hubs uh, for games. Um, we have an active trade body. Uh, it's called the NASCOM Gaming Forum, and we we, do, we are doing a lot of things to kind of really drive that ecosystem. We have six city chapters that meet once every quarter. We have a master ten conference, which has about 1,500 people expected this year. Uh, we have an active Facebook group with about 8,000 uh, members. 
We are doing reports and white papers. This year we are doing a report with Newzu on the Indian market. I have been some of the information that I've been showing you are really, you know, snippets from that that report which will be released in November. And we also lobby with the government to kind of bring their attention to this industry. Um, the conference is a must-attend conference. Anybody wanting to do uh, check out India should really come here. We've had some very, very interesting speakers uh, who've come and spoken at the conference. And it's really a place where uh, you know, all the Indies get to meet each other. And Western companies wanting to check out India, this is the best place to come. It's in November. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you is that game development as a hobby and as, an, as, a, as something that is catching interest. At school levels, we, we ran an initiative where we ran a game dev contest at schools. We had like 2,000 kids who turned up in, in six cities. And uh, it was amazing. It was really amazing. They were making games using Game Maker. They were using uh, Unity. They were, they were kids. They were girls, girl, all girl teams. They were kids from fifth and sixth grade. So I think in terms of the talent that will be available to the Indian, uh, you know, the Indian developer uh, ecosystem moving forward is going to be really, really, uh, you know, very promising signs. So the opportunities for you guys. And uh, I, I'd like to say, you know, that's where the Viking hat comes in, right? So the Vikings, you know, you guys have been great explorers, but I think it's time for you to explore again, and this time you should explore India. And, um, and I think the uh, case that I'm making is there is, a, there is plenty of opportunity in India. You have to know one very important thing. Unlike China, India is a free market. Any of you can come in, set up shop, and start selling in India, right? And you don't need a local partner. You just have to work with Google Play, and you're up and about. And, uh, so, but I, what I would encourage you is to start thinking of having cross-border collaborations because while you could make very good games, and I, I, you know, one of the problems in India is that Indian developers are very young and very new to games, do not have enough experience, whereas many of you guys here have a lot of experience and you also have a very, very good sensibility when it comes to uh, games, the games itself because you've grown up playing games. But I think what you would probably lack is the local cultural and social context, and I think that, that's where you know, a cross-border collaborative uh, teams would really, I think, play a great role. And I think it's something for you guys to explore. And um, I also run an incubator in, uh, in India, and we, we've got teams there. Perhaps there are opportunities for you guys to collaborate with the teams there as well. So, how do you start exploring? Come to the conference, write to the NASCOM Gaming Forum, come to our Facebook page, and you want any help, and we can help you. All right? Okay, that's it. Was that fast enough? <laughs> <laughs> that was super fast, but we have time for some questions. Uh, can you say a little bit more, like uh, tips on how to contact uh, indie, uh, Indian Indies <laughs> uh, besides that? <laughs> besides that, well, uh, the conference, really. This is the place. You come to attend this conference, you will find all the, all the developers will be there. You write to the NASCOM email address. You can, get a, you can get help to get in touch with anybody that you want. We have uh, on our Facebook page, we actually have a directory of all the gaming companies available as a PDF file. You can download that. You can, you can check out companies there. Um, uh, did you have any successful cross-team collaborations? Like, uh, I know there are some happening already, yes. There are a lot of Indian companies who are using uh, either programmers or designers from around the world and collaborating. That's already happening. Thank yeah. you. Hi, thanks for a very insightful presentation. Uh, quick question, I may have missed this earlier on, but did you have a breakdown of the, uh, the landscape of, of, the, uh, of the industry featuring the different platforms that perform well? It seemed very mobile-centric. Yeah, it is. Uh, currently, mobile revenues constitute 50%, which means we do have a pre-existing console base and uh, a pre-existing PC MMO base. It's very small. For the size of the country and for the size of the opportunity, our current revenues at about 500 million is, is a very small number, which essentially means that we have only early adapters who are monetizing. That is set to change. So uh, as we see our forecasting, we see that mobile is going to become nearly 75% of revenues within the next three years because it is just going to 
you know, overtake all the other platforms you know, in terms of the pace of growth. Mobile is going to grow at about 70% CAGR for the next few years. For, uh, for Western developers, what do you see beyond uh, localization into various languages? What do you see as the cultural issues in terms of design uh, for uh, Western developers trying to go into China, for example, or, or Chinese developers going to the West? There have been immense cultural issues to overcome. Um, and like you said, you don't have to go to Indian mythology, though that's a, a very fruitful area, I think. But um, no, you don't have, what I said was I, you don't have to yeah, go No, there. you don't have to, I know. No. But, but so beyond that, do you? Do so you I'll, give you, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a hint. Um, you know American Idol, right? Go check out Indian Idol. It's the same thing, but you, you, this, there are subtle differences in, in, in uh, the, uh, the emotional quotient, the, uh, the, uh, the hyperbole, the, the whole, uh, you know, the melodrama. Right. And, and there are tips there for you to pick up. You take the same thing. Uh, you take, uh, you know, a Big Brother became Big Boss. You, you take, there are so many shows that have been adapted, like uh, Who's Got, you know, India's Got Talent, like America's Got Talent. Just check out these shows and see, just juxtapose the, the, the Indian versions with the American or the Western ones, and you will start seeing the difference. And that's what I mean. It's just, it's just the, the, the certain flavor of how people like. You see Indian movies, they're very different from Western ones. That itself is a great pointer. There is something there uh, that in terms of, in terms of, telling you what Indians, how Indians like to consume content. It's a bit loud, it's a bit <laughs> colorful, but that's how it is. Uh, what would you say is the most uh, successful business model for mobile games in India? Freemium or uh, focus on advertisements or premium? So, people, People are very loath to paying money for content. So it has, you need to bring the price down to the right price. And I think, which is why freemium is the right fit for India. Uh, we've, had, we've had PC downloadables, we've had CD-ROMs, you know, everything went down the piracy route, right? But it's with the right pricing, people will start paying. That's what the movie industry has realized. That's what the music industry has realized. That you right price it, then conversions will start happening. So clearly it's gonna be a freemium, but right now, in the absence of freemium, because people do not have a path to monetization because they are refusing to link their credit cards, mm -hmm. the, the main monetization channel is really uh, ad-driven, which is, which is not the best. You, know, you need Godzilla amounts of downloads to really make any money. So That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> I saw that you had... Uh, the most popular titles in India, and you know, names are familiar. I know what they are, uh, and and you also said that this is the right time if you want to be a Viking because the the Indian game developer scene hasn't developed quite to the point where they are satisfying the the needs of the many people in in India who want to play games. But looking forward, where do you think the the, the competition is for Western companies? who want to develop games for the Indian market, will it be with other Western developers or will it mainly be Indian developers focusing on uh, an Indian market? Clearly Indian developers developing for India. Right now, this is the opportunity, window of opportunities now. The Indian startup scene is characterized by very young companies. They're like literally out of college and they're starting companies. And they're handicapped by a couple of factors. One is that they've probably not been playing games from their childhood as you guys have, uh, may, maybe, but most likely that they have been exposed much later. And B, they do not have any experience. This will, I mean, when you talk about the startup scene in the West, you know, 50% thereabouts are people who've been experienced, who worked in big companies, who've, you know, who, who know dev to some, some degree or the other, and they're forming teams. So the matchup is just not equal right now. The, the Indian talent pool, the startup scene there is very high on energy, very high on you know, enthusiasm, but they do not have necessarily the level of skill and experience to play in the, the global marketplace. Although some of them uh, have managed to do that, and, and, but by and large, the average. But they're learning very fast. Like, they're learning four or five years worth of learning in one year now. So, this is a great time for, for I think, uh, some of the smart Western studios to go in and find their local partners and build those longer-term collaborations. But if, because if you 
if you say, I'm going to wait and watch, in five years from now, they would have all figured it out. Yeah, thank you. Hi again. Um, what, what is the education landscape like there? I know you say that a lot of the students are learning and developing very quickly. Is there, is there a system in place with regards to, to game education in India? Yeah, that's, that's one of the pain points. We just do not have a proper supply side right now. Uh, we've just got a lot of engineering colleges who are just producing general engineering degree students. We have just got one game design college of any significance. And uh, we have plenty of fly-by-night operators offering half-baked courses which don't make any sense at all. Uh, so right now, it's really the onus is on the industry. Like my company, uh, at Druva, we, we have a training academy for our own internal consumption. Because we, we are almost like a finish, we're running a finishing school for people coming out of other schools where, which have not done a great job. And we are spending our money training people, giving them a stipend. It's, it's just crazy. But that's what we're doing. But there's a great opportunity for quality educational entities to come to India as well. Uh, and I think that that is something that we would highly encourage. Even through our trade body, we will try to help them find the right partners to come to India. So if, if for example, I, I was keen on coming and, and partnering with someone in India, yes. how, without your expertise or without local support, how would I know um, the developer or the outfit I am working with is qualified or competent enough without some sort of... Well, that's why we, you have the forum, the NASCOM Gaming Forum, okay. is not just for the developers, it's also for folks like you, who are, I mean, we've had now all the major companies, you know, who are looking at India and saying, scratching their heads and wondering why India is not yet a market, and all of them, when they're coming for their, their rec recce's or their due diligence trips, coming to check out the landscape, they're all approaching the NASCOM Gaming Forum, and we are helping them, you know, with recommendations on who they can go and meet based on what they're looking for. So we could definitely help you. All right. So thanks a lot, Rajesh. This was really interesting for us. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much for coming here.